Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is kind of on a whim. I've been trying since the beginning of time, since I've started coloring my hair probably when I was 16 or 17, to combat the warmth. Like I hated that I had strawberry blonde hair. I hated that I had red tones in my hair. Like I just didn't want that. My roots are a little warm right now and my hair is a little warm right now. And I got the urge to just kind of lean into my natural color. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I've been watching like strawberry blonde hair toning videos all day. And not, to be honest on YouTube, there's not a lot out there, especially for at home uh, color. So I figured I could add to the mix, why not? Um, I mean, we'll see if this is a fail, but um, but we want. I wanna try it. Let me just show you like kind of where I'm at. Do not mind my hair. I had it just in a ponytail because I'm working. I just threw on some makeup because I was like, I'm gonna do this intro. But this is, my hair is definitely a level 10. Um, it is warm, but um, this is kind of where I'm at. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so slight turn of events. Mostly because I feel like for me personally, unless my hair is super bright blonde, that like, it doesn't look good if it's just all one color. It just looks a little flat unless it's like platinum. So I think it needs a little bit of dimension. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add in a few like low lights, I think. I already have like a shadow room and like some depth underneath. So I'm just going to kind of um, uh, add more depth there, like just go over it so it's all the same color. And then I'll be toning all over um, with um, a blonde gloss. So the color that I'm going to be using today is 7NW, which is Milk Tea by Shades EQ. Um, this is a like natural warm color, so my natural hair color is warm, so I want to play off that, like I said. So I'm just going to be using straight 7NW, not going to be adding anything else. With Instead of the processing solution, I'm going to be using the Redken Peroxide 10 Volume Developer. After watching some other videos, I heard that if you use the 10 volume instead of the processing solution when you're doing your root area, that it sticks a little bit better. Um, and the processing solution and the Shades EQ doesn't always take very well to my root because my hair is so um, light naturally. So I'm going to mix up the formula. I'm just going to kind of eye eyeball it the uh, amount that I'm gonna need. Obviously, it is one-to-one -one ratio. So um, I'm gonna mix it in a bowl with a brush. And then um, I have also foils for the low light. These are just from our foils. They got a nice grit on them. I just got them on Amazon. I can link them. Would be fine for obviously highlights and low lights. Um, I have some clips and hair ties and a very large coffee. So, I'm going to mix that up and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to section off my hair to where I want the low lights to be. Okay, so I mix up the color. It's a very scary, orangey looking color, um, but that has no bearing on the final outcome, as I've said before. Um, so I am going to section off my hair. And I also want to mention I am taking a little bit of conditioner in another bowl just in case, like, it looks like there's going to be a harsh line. I can kind of blend it out with the conditioner where it transitions from the dark to the blonde. So I'm not going to low light the underneath part. I'm probably just going to go in with like a deep shadow root there. So I'm just going to section off the top where I'm going to do the low lights. And I'm leaving where I normally part my hair. I'm not parting my hair in the middle because I never part my hair in the middle really. So the placement would be off if I did that. Now this isn't a shadow root or a reverse balayage tutorial, but I'll just briefly explain what I'm doing here. You just take the color and you start by going all around the hairline and then you go on an angle and kind of part your hair moving towards the back. Uh, the closer you are to the front of your head, the less you bring the color down and then you bring it further and further down as you move towards the back of the head. And um, it's really simple. I've been doing this for years. It's definitely pretty foolproof as long as you do it in clean sections. If there's something you, if this is something you guys are interested in seeing in a little bit more detail, then let me know in the comments and I'll definitely do a tutorial. There is only one of you, only one of me. There's a million of those who won't let us be. But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed. Cause baby, I got you. You, you, you I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across 
across the dirt I've been scared to live cause some people never learn But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby I got you, 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 you So what I'm doing here is I'm just sectioning out the front pieces because I don't want to put any low lights there. I want to keep them nice and bright. And then I'm just going to secure them with a hairband to keep them out of the way. I'm also doing the same thing with the back section that I did the shadow root on so I don't have any overlap or whatnot. So now I'm gonna start the low light. I'm just sectioning out my hair to get that going. I took a small section and then I'm just sectioning out the bottom part to leave blonde. And then I'm going to weave out a piece of the top section for the low light. I didn't notice this until I watched the video, but that part at the top should be straight and it is a little jagged. Uh, it came out fine in the end, which you'll see, but um, you really should make sure the part is straight and I made sure I did that for the rest of the sections. Now I'm just putting the color on and bringing it down to the place where I want the depth to be. I'm not bringing it all the way to the ends of my hair, so I'm just kind of stopping midway. And then I'll be putting the conditioner on that I showed you early to ensure a seamless blending. And then you're just going to follow the same pattern throughout the rest of the head. To be daring, baby, dance the night away I let my head down if I won Don't you just get tired chasing fame And being pretty all the time Doesn't sound like fun I also want to make mention it's important to kind of follow the curvature of your head So I am going on a little bit of an angle To ensure that it looks the most natural Much better You can also see that some of my low light sections are thicker than others and I did this for a reason just to make sure everything wasn't so uniform and it just had its own unique look. Now when you get to the top it's kind of personal preference. You can do a really thin weave so it's blonder on top or you can do a thicker piece if you want more of a contrasty look at the top of your head. So I went ahead and did the other side. I have like four to five foils on each side. Um, I took my front pieces down. They are staying bright. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same formula and I'm just going to tap the root and in between the foils as well so it's the same color at the root and the depth all the way through and then just like put some depth in the back to no foils though because I don't know. Um, so I'm going to do that and then um, I'll let it process and then I will tone the blonde. So now I'm going to do the all over gloss um, and I'm going to do leave my hair wet for that. Um, so I'm going to be using 9G vanilla cream. It's like a golden blonde. And then I'm also going to be using a little bit. You can't, I'm not even going to bother showing you this. It's all wet. So um, it's not even, you can't even tell. But that's 9AA, which is papaya, which is like a strawberry blonde. So you don't want too, too much of that, but... I'm gonna do double the 9G compared to the 9AA. Then I'm gonna cut the whole formula by half with crystal clear and then equal parts processing solution. I'm not doing the 10 volume for the gloss because um, I don't really need to open the cuticle at all. I'm just depositing. So um, I'm not gonna show myself putting it all over my hair. I'm just gonna slap it on, let it process for maybe like 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna watch it, see like what the color's turning and, um, and go from there. And then I will rinse everything out and show you the final result. Okay, so this is how it came out. I'm actually super, super happy with how it came out. I don't know if you can really see that well on camera but um you can just see how subtle the like dimension is which is exactly what i was going for um i was very pleasantly surprised you can still see like the face framing pieces are lighter which is what i wanted let me see if i could show you the back um it's just like the dimensions in through here i kept the ends lighter which is also what i wanted um if when it gets cooler out, like for the fall and winter, maybe I'll take the um, depth through in through the ends. We'll see. But um, I did a level seven for the low light, which is still considered dark blonde. So I'm just, you know, it's not a high contrast. It just looks natural to me. And my hair is, like I said, very warm naturally. So I was just kind of trying to embrace that. So I'll link everything down below that you'll need if you want to achieve something like this. But just to briefly go over it, I used Redken Shade DQ 7NW 9AA 
and 9G. And then I also used the processing solution, crystal clear, and then the 10 volume when I did the low light. So thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you're also into the warmer tones um, or if you have any other good combinations of Shades EQ for warm tones that you know or like, please leave them in the comments and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.